What's going on YouTube? Kovax Corner here. Appreciate you taking time to come through. Click on the video. We got another React video here. Uh, Garrett Sy Shire. All credibility goes to this individual. Check him out. Subscribe, like, look at his uh, videos and stuff. He dives deep into Yu-Gi-Oh! And what I, I want to react to is the greatest upset in Yu-Gi-Oh! history. All credibility goes to Garrett Sy Shire. 100% down in the description. I'm going to leave the post for the original video and his page and stuff like that. Go show him some love. Don't forget, like, subscribe, all that. So I haven't really watched the whole video, seen little bits and pieces of the video, and I'm interested in it. So that's, that's why we're going to react. All right, so let's get into it. So I want to start a video about trading card games with one of the most legendary moments in worldwide sports history. It's Jeremy Lynn Sandy. Tomorrow night, you go to New York and you... I'm pretty sure that dude was like a basketball player or something like that. Turned into a Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro. Not 100% on that, but we'll see. Deal with the Lynn Sandy. Have you been following that story at all? What? Jeremy Lynn, are you following that story at all? No idea. I know he is. Oh yeah, Jeremy Lynn. Yeah. It's a classic. Are you surprised the production over the past week? I Man, Majama went to Harvard. Went to Harvard, playing on a Harvard basketball team. Jeez. I just I don't know the deck is playing that well. And, well, I just keep hearing stories of people saying I lost to prank it, and I don't know what they're <laughs> still don't know what. So what is it, like a jank deck that he was using? Just some some randomness? Some random assortment of cards that just mesh well together? That seems pretty cool to me. <laughs> to find uh, what goes together. Boom. He's playing Lynx. Lynx summons. Like the level of competitiveness to get to a YCS is actually pretty intense. That's pretty crazy. And he probably took all the training that he learned from basketball and like honed that to do uh, to build his Yu-Gi-Oh deck and just to like take YCS. That's freaking nuts, man. 2012, Jeremy Lin went from being a player who was barely in the NBA to being a national superstar overnight. He came off the bench of a struggling New York Knicks lineup where a slew of injuries was the only reason he was even put on the court. This is where a player who no fan, no pundit, no coach or analyst even heard of started racking up triple doubles like it was nothing. Jeremy yeah. Lin would set the NBA on fire. And so Lin Sanity would last a full month. The Knicks would go on a seven win streak and the Jeremy Lin hype just consumed the media. Bruh, he made it to the front of time. That's nuts. That's crazy. But eventually things had to change. Mix franchise player Carmelo Anthony had to return back to the starting lineup. And just like that, Lin Sanity was over. Nick's head coach, Mike D'Antoni, would end up resigning. And then the Lin Sanity system went ahead and crumbled. Jeremy Lin was no longer the Knicks. Didn't student. have the proper and support, a lot of man. Say that Lin was one of the That's why I moved to Yu Gi Oh! for the support. <laughs> but in my opinion, it's even more than that. Jeremy Lin was more than an underdog. And as YCS commentator Tom Payne puts it, as he watched this Dinka Bowie pull off the most incredible upset in YCS history, he was an underdog. <laughs> this was unknown. <laughs> That's jokes. <laughs> in Yu-Gi-Oh, the supposed best deck doesn't win all the events. Kashira, Kashira decks things. everywhere. The duelists are able to find ways to beat the meta game, the game within a game, to outplay the mass majority of players, or some players. Can back when, players. back when Rescue Ace was the shit, everyone was running Rescue Ace when it dropped and stuff, and then it got some support, and it was like running. And that's when Pearly was starting to like come through because they ended up switching over, where Pearly ended up becoming 
like both of these put together pretty much for a little bit for YCS tournaments that, that I noticed anyway. The mass majority of players, Labyrinth. or some players, can just play the best deck and still win. At Team YCS, Sao Paulo, Pacoa Hermonta and his team with Kamal Crooks and Ruben Penaranda was able to pilot Unchained to win the whole nice. event. A deck that had hardly been on anyone's radar prior. Joshua Schmidt was able to take Bestial Runic, a certainly known quantity, but certainly not in the top 10 decks to win that. What Runic was like doing its thing and everyone was rocking Runic too, yeah man. Runic was like a very value had a bunch of very valuable spell and trap cards, I must say, and like it meshed well together. At 20 deck formats, YCS. There have been even times in the heat of a dice roll heavy nuclear bomb FTK format where you know people firewall just dragon their first FTKs turn. someone brought a deck from 2015 that was basically unchanged and won the UK national championship with that's them. nuts shout out to Tom Rose I guess but all of these little upsets YCS Milan was in a different solar system all the way Milan holy all the around the world bro 2018 and hitting store shelves is the new Yu-Gi-Oh! side set, Hidden Summoners. However, the community the sentiment regarding this set was, well... And then I'm really gonna be harsh on this set. So you guys who want to like knight this in the comment sections and defend opening packs and all that, get your pitchforks ready. I don't think Trenkins will be performing past the regional level, and it's gonna struggle even there. So it was this. Hidden summons. So this is the card list overall, right? I just tried to scroll down thinking it was the actual card list. <laughs> nice. I just don't see... Shouts to zero problem. games. And I'll eat my words if it pops up YCS. Yes, I will eat them. If you didn't get it right there, Hidden Summoners was not a well-liked set upon release. It was kerplunked into the middle of a Firewall Dragon FTK format. A format where most competitively viable decks would seek to win the game on their first turn by completing an infinite loop of cards to win their game on the first turn. The primary enabler of... I have eaten this effect 20 times in a turn to inflict 8,000 light points of damage to your opponent. Offer one monster on your side of the field as a tribute to inflict 500 points of direct damage to your opponent's life points. Monsters used for a tribute summon or that are offered as tributes due to other card effects are excluded. This deck was Yu-Gi-Oh's linked monster poster child, Firewall Dragon, coining the term FTK, or First Turn Kill. Hidden Summoners brought in the Nepotist, Mayakashi, and Frank Kids archetypes. I know Mayakashi was actually huge. It's like a really good card. A lot of people were running that for a little bit, especially against Kishira. I've seen a couple of these decks go up against Kish Kishira decks. All decks Prank Kids was like a troll deck, kind of in my opinion. If it didn't FTK or could play up to 12 hand traps, it wasn't worth playing. The decks also utilized three card combos instead of two card combos or were too slow to which decks like Sky Striker could just simply outpace them in a longer game. In addition, with three card combos, it makes it difficult for your deck to execute their strategy consistently and just fail to stack up to, well, an FTK format. And we still live in an FTK format pretty and much so in Yu Gi Oh! Summoners would be one of those sets that would just be lost to the sands of Yu Gi Oh! time. Dusted. And so little people paid any mind to it and just continued their Firewall Dragon FTK. So, well, it made the most sense. It was the most valuable deck back when uh, Firewall the was the most viable to use for the FTKs, right? Before YCS Milan, and you pick up your iPhone 6 to watch your favorite Yugi Tuber. I think so. Maybe, but it's just, it's just a bit odd. So, moving on down the list. All right, Forbidden well, limited list. Nothing banned so far, so I mean, oh god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Firewall Dragon. <laughs> they fucking banned him. They fucking banned Firewall Dragon. 
Firewall Dragon, the poster child of Link Monsters, a card that many people thought would never get banned because of its importance to the Yu-Gi-Oh! storyline and anime. What about you guys? Leave a comment down in the comments, like, did you ever think it was going to get banned during the format, during its FTK run? Or did you know that something was going to come? I personally thought that something else was going to come overall. Due to you can't just have one format run everything continuously. You had to come up with something against it, right? And branding, well, that's just been forbidden. Some were sad, but many rejoiced. It was the end of an era in Yu-Gi-Oh! But while people were celebrating, the top players in the game were scrambling with only nine days to find a new strategy that wasn't. Nine FTK. days was not named to build the deck. Just imagine how many cards. Just imagine how many cards they have in their stockpile of building decks. How many cards they'd have to go to. But like a good majority of them already know what all the cards do, right? So it's like just picking and choosing. But man, that that was such a blow. Firewall dragon. So what can we even do now? Common consensus descended onto one of the few decks that could already sort of function without Fireball Dragon. These were the newly released in Soul Fusion just a couple months earlier, Thunder Dragons. Thunder, Thunder Dragons. Already a no Thunder Dragons are making a comeback too, from what I've seen on like Duel Links and Master Duel. A combo deck that can utilize the huge combos that the monsters allow, but. It can also function very well without Firewall Dragon with in-archetype win conditions like Thunder Dragon Colossus slowing the game down to a halt. Easily summonable, prevents cards from being added from deck to hand, protects itself from battle and card effects. Huge card, huge card. Also backed up with massive monsters like Thunder Dragon Titan. Thunder Dragon's... Big dude. Can destroy cards when a thunder effect is activated. It protects itself from card effects. Sick. And no, it might just be my, me and my account going through a phase of running through the Thunder Dragon decks. You can slow down the game, <laughs> basically stun your opponent out, and then just switch all their monsters on the next turn and attack the game. Most combo decks would just be I'll be dead night. The nice. Of thunder Dragon Colossus, preventing you from adding cards from your deck to your hand. Alongside the it's fact a huge that combo. Had a very good resource, so they could also enter into grind game and play out a back and forth game if needed. If your opponent wasn't playing an FTK, Thunder Dragon Colossus was the next format super threat. However, opposing the Thunder Dragon deck was an already known quantity in Sky Striker. Sky Striker was a control deck that could play enough hand traps to stop the FTK, and if the game dragged out into a long amount of turns, would be Better and more resources, more constant than other decks, flexible versus big combo decks. Which is true, a good majority of people ended up uh, going for the, for the Sky Striker deck. The most they opted out for the Sky Striker deck. Deadly consistent with the only starter you need being Sky Striker Ace Ray to get your snowball roll. And with the quick play spell, Sky Striker Mecha Widow Anchor being nice. one of the most incredible forms of effect negation and removal for the time. So, yeah. now with nine days Huge. to Milan, those were the two premier decks at the forefront of the Yu-Gi-Oh! community. These decks were safe, known quantity, and it's hard to guess other decks that could realistically compete. Thunder Dragon Colossus could check Sky Striker, and at the time, it was mostly considered that Sky Striker could deal with any rogue threat. Sky Striker was just a better deck than any deck that had been printed prior to it. There were some last Dark Warrior hurrahs, despite losing Fireball Dragon. A deck like Alter Geist would also emerge, trying to directly counter the Sky Striker strategy, being able to play copies of Secret Village of the Spellcasters to prevent Sky Striker players from activating one of their 30 to 35 spells in their main. Damn, like running a control deck with 30, 35 spells in it, out of like a 40 card deck, you're just praying. You gotta negate everything, everything, and just hope for the best, and then draw cards to make sure that you have enough on your turn so that you're able to do your link summons and shit. Man, missions. And so just like that, that's your format for YCS Milan, close the book, and let's play.
but one person who didn't do that was Dink Cobb Bowie. In a format slated to be dominated by Sky Striker, Thunder Dragons, the last hurrah of FPKs, and Floodgates galore, Dink Cobb Bowie decided to load up with Prank Kids from Hidden Summers. Earlier that year, Dink Cobb Bowie had done something extremely Dante. Soon. Nice. He had brought Burning Abyss to a 2300 player tournament and scored his first runner up position and YCS top. He's gonna pull it off again, this time with an even bigger upset in Prank Kids. So let's see what this deck is actually going to do. Prank Kids are a link summoning and fusion summoning spam strategy. Okay, hold on, quick aside. The card art on this card, they're just so good. Like, they tell so many stories in just a single image. Anyway, That's freaking cool. How they I do like the artwork of these cards, right? That's pretty cool. I could actually see, like, Pegasus running this deck 100%. ...accomplish this is that each prank kid has an effect that when used as a material for a prank kid's extra deck summon, can summon another prank kid from the deck, giving them an explosive amount of link infusion material every turn. Just stockpiling on material that you could just link summon. Jeez. Yo, that's nuts. Always read the effects of your cards to have proper effect decks, eh? Alongside the fact that all extra deck monsters have ways to recur prank kids from the graveyard back to the field. That's so crazy. if you aren't going to do a good job at clearing a prank kid's field, you're in for a nasty OTK going into turn 3. Also, the end board was oppressive, with prank kid's pandemonium able to fusion summon. Fusion summon on the opponent's turn, battle... Butler is a card. All your prank kids go off. Just slaps. Just a deck that slaps, eh? Into Battle Butler, a quick effect Raigeki during your opponent's turn. That could put a number in the various combo piles and Thunder Dragon decks running around the tournament. That's crazy. If you needed help dealing with back row, the Link 4 could do the same for spells and traps in Rip Roy Roaster. Despite all these awesome sounding effects, Frankens is not a good deck. There are many glaring weaknesses. To begin, in this format, there are one card combo with Sky Striker, Ace, Ray able to start a snowball going for the Sky Striker strategy. The normal summon of Armageddon Knight is a complete full Dark Warrior combo. Thunder Dragon has Battery Man Solar to start a lot of its plays. Nice. But Frankens doesn't have this kind of consistency. So it doesn't have like a proper start. You have to, like, pray that your hand is what it is and, like, luck out RNG on your side, right? Just hope for the best kind of thing or, like, try to hold out throughout the game. I wonder I wonder how many, uh, what is it, like, Ash Blossoms he ends up running in that deck. What kind of hand traps? A lot of prank kids' hands needs to start by drawing two prank kids Whatever negates. spell to keep going, which is Damn. basically a three-card combo. So the deck on paper is just a brick fest, and in practice, it is pretty close to it as well. Prank Kids needed something external to actually push it to be able to not just top it a bit, but win. And that was the format. Thunder Dragon and Sky Strikers were slated to be the best deck, and Prank Kids had an unbelievably one-sided matchup versus Thunder Dragon. With Thunder Dragon's That's crazy. that I've been talking about, Easily summonable, prevent cards from being out of. Oh, yeah, we already covered that. Prank kids are one of the only oh. decks in Yu Gi Oh! that do not. I don't recognize the number, I don't pick it up. Not need to add cards from their deck to their hand. They just summon prank kids from the deck over and over again. I am heavy weapons guy. <laughs> prank kids were skipping steps in that time of Yu Gi Oh! And Thunder Dragon didn't have much else besides the Thunder Dragon Colossus preventing searching. So as long as your deck was able to play through Colossus, it wasn't really a big problem. The issue was, there were hardly any decks that could. And the big thing as well for Prank Kids is they could make one of Thunder Dragon's biggest counters. But it wasn't really realized until after the event. And that was Borolos Dragon. Borlo yeah. Dragon would be able to take control of an opponent's Thunder Dragon Colossus, and funnily enough, Thunder Dragons couldn't play through their own floodgate effect. Just getting flooded out, that's nuts. Against yourself, wow. 
Wow. Make sure that you understand the card effects. <laughs> so, Frank Kitts had a basically auto-win matchup versus one of the premier decks in the format. And it was Dink Habui, the only person who recognized that. Now, I could rave about how great a Sky Striker matchup this deck had, but played perfectly. Sky Striker honestly had a pretty advantageous moment versus Prank Kids. The key card in the Prank Kids deck was Prank Kids Doodle Doo. A link to that can add any Prank Kids spell trap from the deck to their hand, allowing you to get Prank Kids Pandemonium and begin to execute tons of fusion plays. One Widow Anchor on a Doodle Doo could do a number onto the Prank Kids board, and the Sky Striker player has a very high chance of making it to the next turn and continue with the long game plan that Sky Striker seeks to execute. But this segment is all about external factors, and there's one extra thing that helped Dinka win this matchup. No one had bothered to read a single Prank Kids card prior that's funny like i'm saying you gotta read those cards make sure that you know same with like dual links master duel all that prior to this event and dinka buoy was gonna weaponize that you have to try and figure things out on the fly instead of sitting down for hours trying to understand what the prank kid strategy is trying to accomplish that is the advantage dinka was wielding he's playing an objectively worse deck but no one knows what his things do so going into swiss Dinka ends 9-2. and two. He Damn. even gets onto a feature match where he plays against a Gem Knight FTK player. The problem is, his opponent knows exactly what all the Prank Kids cards do. I have a full Prank Kid deck in my bag currently. I've read all of the cards thoroughly and I've played out locals a bunch, but I haven't like, I don't know any of the combos. But not many people were as fortunate as that head of the Magician player. Dinka tears- Gem Knight, you see, <laughs> he corrected himself, that's funny through a Thunder Dragon and Sky Striker laden top cut. And he's fortunate enough to dodge the very difficult Alter Guys matchup that his deck has. He What's your guys' favorite playstyle? Leave down in the comments. Do you like the FTK or do you like to uh, go for the long game? Go the distance. I like enjoying a back and forth, go the distance kind of game. I feel like it's more fun overall. Played another couple feature matches here and there where he actually took down Andres Torres. At the time, was not as decorated, but was the winner of YCS Mexico City and won UDS Monterey. He is Nuts. one of the greatest duelists who is playing impeccable Yu-Gi-Oh at the time. But even in the top four, people still don't know what Prank Kids cards do. So Dinka Bui is in the zone. After taking down one of Yu-Gi-Oh's greatest players of all time, he has one more hurdle to jump over. Federico Makotsi. Federico is in and out of top cuts. He has a chance to achieve the Yu-Gi-Oh dream, however, to win a YCS at only age 18. This year, he made top 64 at the European Championship. Wasn't he the youngest kid that ever did win a Yu-Gi-Oh YCS? I'm not 100% sure. I remember hearing something about that and seeing something about that a while back on YouTube. Ah, oh, man, I don't remember and finds himself piloting a strong Thunder Dragon deck through Top Gun. But Dinka has his fork and knife out to take down yet another Thunder Dragon opponent. So let's see what the most insane medical and the biggest upset in YCS history looks like. In game one, Dinka executes his optimal but oppressive combo. It's just a single Link monster and one set- Add two cards from Pandemonium. your graveyard. It really is just just that simple. So Federico moves to play, and even establishes an exceptionally strong Thunder Dragon combo. But as he plays, Dinka isn't even moving. Remember, this prank hits Pandemonium can summon a Battle Butler whenever he'd like. But Dinka realizes that Battle Butler is not his win condition here. The thought process here for Dinka is that if he wastes his Battle Butler early on, there's possibilities that Federico could just have the right extenders and maybe wind up OTK Dinka instead. Yeah, just straight clapping, clapping your uh, your main monster, right? We end up seeing a lot of that in Duel Links and Master Duel too, whether or not like choices, right? If you want to play that card right away. Or you want to wait and see how it's going to play out and if you're able to play it after the fact just to see how it's going to play out smart so ka instead goes for weather washer which is opting to play a slow grind game 
The monsters he summoned Bring him down to his level. By battle through Weather Watcher's effect. As you can see, two Prank Kid monsters. If you Prank Kid monster attacks, your opponent cannot activate cards or effects until the end of the damage step during your opponent's turn quick effect. You can tribute this card, then target two Prank Kids non future monsters with different names in your graveyards, for some of them. They cannot be destroyed by battle this turn. You can only use the effect of this card once per turn. It's pretty nuts. So they can make it Huge. To the nice plays. To be fuel for a crackback. But despite facing down double Colossus and Titan, which is the premier end board of the format, with most decks probably just instantly conceding when they see this, Dinka will play on to win game one. But look, I'm not here to show you what a YCS winning sequence looks like in the very first game. Let's watch Dinka pull off the biggest upset in YCS history. Remember, Dinka is playing a quote bad deck whose cards the Yu-Gi-Oh community refused to read up until Dinka was activating them on their screen to turn the premier end board into Mincemi. In That's two, funny. Federico goes first with this Thunder Dragon deck. But again, there is no known strategy to beat prank kids. So Federico just does what he's been doing this entire tournament. It's double Colossus and Titan once again. But this is the exact end board that Dinka wants to play into. Again, many decks in this format would just concede when they see this, unless they open the perfect hand to deal with it. But Dinka's deck is made for this. Now he hasn't opened wildly awesome with something like an instant fusion. It's a couple of prank kids in a fusion spell and a call by the grave, which to be fair, nice. he hardly even needs. First, Ka fires a pot of desires, removing the top 10 cards of his deck from the duel in order to draw two cards. This finds him another prank kid and an infinite impermanence. And like an absolute gamer, nice. he doesn't even use the infinite impermanence to stop the Thunder Dragon Titan from being able to destroy the cards in his field. It's Chainlink 1 Fancies, Chainlink 2 Roxies, Chainlink Clear, Rock and Ryan. Fancies dumps, Prank Kids plan, the chain resolves, and two more Prank Kids come out from the deck. Yo, that's another thing, is the chain effects. Chain effects are nuts when it's like, oh, I chain, do you counter chain? No counter chain, I add a chain. The whole chain effect thing on top of link summoning is insane. Like, you have to be really intelligent to be playing a deck like that. That's that's insane. No shame to our commentator friends, Marcello and Tom. Shout out to all the people that run link, link decks. You guys are geniuses, man. It's not that easy to clear this board, even for prank kids. From what we saw, at least, the main uh, way to do it was borrow They just mess about. <laughs> borrow load. Yeah. But you can't even summon it. During the main phase, fusion summon one prank kids fusion monster from your action deck using monsters from your hand or field as fusion material. For the rest of this turn, after this card resolves, you cannot normal or special summon monsters except prank kid monsters. So we can't eat. Wow. So, unless... Someone, I don't know, a Phoenix is Dinka is kind of in a weird spot this turn. Surprisingly, he might have wanted any other fusion spell to go into his rocket ride. Prank Kid's Pandemonium locks him into only summoning Prank Kids for the rest of the turn. So he can't access cards like Borlo Dragon in order to take control of Federico's Colossus, the main win condition here for Dinka. So in this board state, Federico decides to use his only point of interaction to try to destroy Dinka's rocket ride by using Thunder Dragon Matrix trying to trigger his Titan. But Dinka just has called by, so there you it go. never even matters. Federico, with no forms of interruption, just has to sit and watch as Dinka executes a full prank its combo. Rocket Ride goes to tribute itself to summon the remaining two prank kids in the graveyard. With four prank kids on the field, Dinka Link summons into Bow Wow Bark using the remaining two prank kids to summon two more prank kids from the deck. And you can just see the That's crazy. sea of Link material out of the deck that everyone just wrote off. That's such a ridiculous engine to have. That is crazy. Chat, yo, I know we're going to be seeing people running this deck, trying this deck out. Here's the Link summon of Doodle Doo. And fortunate for Dinka, he drew into another polymerization Did not change the outcome. of his prank kid Roxy's, which allows him to fusion summon into a weather washer. Backing that up, he uses Doodle Doo to add back a prank kid's pandemonium and another prank kid. So he goes weather washer and pandemonium pass, which is 
nearly a mirror of the first game. It's probably what Dinka has also been doing all tournament to beat his Thunder Dragon opponents. The goal here for Dinka is to get it back to his turn, prevent the potential OTK from Federico in order to make a Borlo Dragon in order to start picking apart the board of Federico. From his empty hand, Federico draws into a very nice gold sarcophagus, which can nice. banish any monster from his deck. But in the draw phase, Dinka uses his Weather Washer to resummon two Link monsters from the graveyard for some incredible card value. Nice. Bow Wow Bark contribute itself to add back more Prank Kid monsters from the graveyard to the hand to... Those effects, man. I, I, I Like, I can't say it enough. You gotta read the cards, make sure you know what it is that you're doing, what you're playing, and how they end up meshing together properly. That's that's crazy. Make a battle butler Smart any man. fusion summon with the set pandemonium line. Federico will go to attempt to trigger his Thunder Dragon Titan, but Dinka Bui has so many ways to stop the Thunder Dragon Titan from connecting for a pop. Alongside the fact that his Doodle Doo cannot be destroyed by battle. So as Federico tries to enter the battle phase, Dinka just goes pandemonium right into a battle butler, which floods the fields with three more prank kids effects triggering. Nice. So much so that Dinka has actually run out of prank kids in his deck because of his pot of desires. Federico probably was better off maybe not even attacking here, but with time running low, he, he went to attack, he's he under pressure. This forces him to play into Dinka's prank kids land in the graveyard. Another huge card that people are not expecting to be as good as it really is. Prank kids plan when your opponent declares an attack can put back as many prank kids cards in Shuffle any number of prank kids cards from your graveyard into your deck, and if you do, that attacking monster loses 100 attack for each card shuffled until the end of this turn. And he ran out of all his prank kids, so all his prank kids are in his graveyard. So as many prank kids that he has times 100. That's crazy. The graveyard back into the deck to reduce the attack of the monster. It's not the attack reduction that's the big deal, it's the fact that Dinka gets to shuffle back sometimes eight or more cards yeah that's nuts deck and extra deck to create a near infinite grind game against even the most control based deck straight grind it out man a couple breaks. down to the nitty gritty is unable to completely clear the field of Dinka just as Dinka intended so Ka gets played and he went up in like points 9400 three monsters still remaining on his field so Dinka just link summons into the ace against thunder dragons it's Borla. And Bam. the crowd knows what this means. Once again, they enjoy the ball. Already, like, toasted. Toasted. Nice enough for Dinka. He even gets an instant fusion off the top of his deck. Nice. Oh, probably going crazy. You can't blame them. This deck was definitely the underdog of the event. And it seems like he's, he's going to be winning. Like called an underdog? <laughs> this was unknown. Yeah. And it's a one-stop shop right into Rocket Rock. Dinka fires away, link climbing all the way into a Boral Sword Dragon. So from the crowd, Damn, son. Down, down from the ten. Was he gonna make a Boral Sword as well? Bam. Oh. Dinka does not huge, the box of huge plays. As the clock strikes zero, he is swinging for game. Dinka Bui wins YCS Milan with Frank Kids. That's crazy. Huge. Frank Kids is the winner of YCS Milan 2018. That was insane. We had a lot of emotion. Do you guys ever think that prank kids would win a YCS at all? Something that I kind of looked at like a troll deck. I guess it kind of is, but like you can utilize the shit out of that deck. Afterwards, this win would send shockwaves through the Yu-Gi-Oh community. Everyone wanted to try their luck with the craziest deck to win YCS, Frank Kids. However, it would take another three and a half years for the deck to ever find more competitive success after Milan. Why was this not the deck of the format? Why it was the Thunder Dragon killer? The problem? People read the cards. Frank People read the cards. The perfect storm of a metagame to jump into. Fresh off the bandwidth with a set community mindset in play for most of pro players, Dinka Bui found the perfect time to uncork an off-the-wall strategy. But after YCS Milan, people 
knew what Crankids did, were aware of the threat, and found out the conditions that they needed to beat the deck. For example, the biggest choke point in the deck was Prank Kids Doodle Doo. This card can add any Prank Kids spell trap, which typically gets Pandemonium in order to allow Fusion Summons on their opponent's turn. That is crazy, man. The problem is, if an uh, infinite impermanence or effect failure hits this card, you are cut off from your biggest form of interruption and recursion your deck has. Dinka did what everyone dreams to do in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! But he took an unknown deck that no one really paid any kind of attention or mind to and utilized it so well that it made people pay attention to uh to the deck that's that's pretty nuts man especially in the Yu-Gi-Oh community that's like a stable that's a stamp bro but something out of ycs they just they clapping ycs yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh media is expanding people are genuinely reading all the cards no matter how good or bad they are Yu-Gi-Oh players from five years ago are five times better now as well. Information spreads more quickly. People understand how to beat these decks. I mean, shoot, content creators are giving away free information when back then it was just... Yeah, Fire King decks were deck sick. profiles and metagame reports. It is very difficult to do what Dinka did in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! But he still finds ways even to this day. But I don't want to actually say that this is some sort of prank kid's accomplishment. It's more an accomplishment for Dinka Bui. This was his crown jewel in his Yu-Gi-Oh career. He was the man who connected all the dots for the perfect moment. Huge. This was his defining Huge. achievement as a player. This wasn't luck for him. He's done this kind of upset before, bringing a weird unknown deck and doing well with it. It just happened that he took it to a YCS and then one with it. And some players will fade out of existence after getting their big rogue victory. But Dinka Bui is still one of Yu-Gi-Oh's most relevant players to this day. The past two years for Dinka Bui, he has had more impact than just winning a YCS. He has invented numerous decks that have changed the Yu-Gi-Oh format. Every turn That's cool. he finds a way to end. Yo. He never shows up with anything standard. It, it, it's cool to have people like that you know, for any kind of TCG game, because it opens up your mind, it expands the horizons of a deck, of what a deck, what everybody tells you what the conventional deck actually does, and then expand the horizon and open up your eyes to a whole other plethora of uh, information that you're able to do with this deck. That's, that's nuts, man. That's quite a skill to have, and I'm glad for all TCG competitions and stuff like that, that we have players like that, that like the showcase what it is that you're able to do with certain decks and other cards and stuff like that. that's interesting know what i mean <laughs> everything this guy makes is study and that is more valuable than any number of ycs wins. well i think because like he had a harvard degree too right he's pretty smart when it comes to that he's, he's about that life thanks for watching Wait, 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 okay, okay, okay. So in 2021, Prank has got, like, the most broken piece of legacy support, like, ever printed. It's a Link 1 for the, the Link deck. So the deck then became meta, it did some silly stuff for literally a year, like, Pack won a YCS with it, and then boom, Yamu got banned, deck dead, now Prank Kids is still irrelevant. Bye! <laughs> Yo, shout out to, uh, Garrett Sai Shire. Huge shout out! All credibility goes to him. He did all the work for it. I'm gonna leave a link down in uh, down in the description below. But yeah, no man, it kind of opened my eyes a little bit more for uh, like don't underestimate certain decks, don't underestimate certain cards. You know what I'm saying? But with that being said, let me know what you think about it down in the comment section. I appreciate you taking the time, come through, smash that like button, and see you next time, man. Peace.